The pandemic has absolutely impacted digital ID ecosystems. It's done so in a number of ways. It's driven demand for people to start working from home who hadn't before in the past. It's driven more need for convenient use of services that have more higher risk profiles, such as banking, or needing to transact with governments. Um, and absolutely from an enterprise perspective, when we have people's patterns changing, we have workforces that are now working from home, it's driven the need for more and more security um, while maintaining that quality workforce um, being engaged in the ecosystem. Uh, of course, if we look at the pandemic in the terms of proving particular attributes, like have you received a vaccine or not, or is your COVID-19 test negative or not, um, if we think about those concepts, what's really important about them is that they are, in fact, bound to a digital identity, a COVID test or a, or a vaccine proof doesn't necessarily matter unless we know that you are the person that is attached to that particular attribute. So COVID-19 pandemic has driven all of these demands forward um, with a more urgent and a much higher level to where in the past when we talked about digital ID, sometimes we talked about it as more of a convenience so that we could transact easily from anywhere. Now it's about life needs, ensuring that food can stay on the table, that people can stay employed, that the economy can keep moving forward um, while not leaving anyone behind. So ensuring that we have social inclusion and a social equity in these systems as we move forward um, in the pandemic. So when we talk around digital ID, we often hear that there are trade-offs between security and usability or between security and privacy, for example. Um, I really think we should challenge vendors to try to look at the ecosystem more as a positive sum approach. And so how can we build in security and usability? How can we build in security and privacy? Uh, so I think there's a, a challenge, first of all, to, to try to really look at this ecosystem as additive um, versus you know having to have one or the other. Um, in terms of usability, we have to have usability. These systems have to be easy for people to use. And in a lot of cases, we're just not there yet. Um, and so we may find that the most easy to use solution will win the day, but it will be very low or much lower in terms of security or privacy and personal data protection. So the identity management, identity and access management, industry practitioners and vendors and ecosystem at large it's really challenged to try to bring each of these forward at, and security and privacy, security and usability. And that takes commitment and investment, user testing. Um, we certainly are making it further down uh, in terms of progress to get to systems that are have all of these features. Um, so I think we should try to ensure that we have the easiest system that we can use. Um, a lot of education around these systems um, while not lowering or degrading the privacy protection, the personal data control, and the security protection that is the foundation of the challenges that we're trying to solve with digital identity. Some of the biggest security challenges regarding digital ID, I would say, really do rely on the fact that the system that we are working with um, ha has flaws from a digital ID perspective that are built into it. And so we know that the internet was not built with an identity layer. And so some of the challenges in this space are, um, shall we build a new internet that now has an identity layer or shall we build an identity layer um, that can hook into the existing systems and i would say we really uh when we whenever we see the idea of should we do one thing or another thing we should challenge ourselves to try to do both of those things and try to bridge those things together and so we don't have an identity layer in the current internet there is work being done to build that those capabilities and those solutions, and they do exist in different solutions and in different ecosystems today. Um, there are other communities who are trying to, if you will, rebuild the internet from the ground up. And so both of these paths should be encouraged. And 
the challenges sometimes are brought about by fracture in terms of marketplace fracture, in terms of developers and vendors, as well as relying parties and clients trying to determine which direction they should invest in. And so I would really encourage and, 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 and try to push our communities that when we see this kind of fracture happening for one approach or another approach, we should really challenge ourselves to build bridges between these approaches. Um, we should really focus on globally interoperable standards that are being built in, often in associations of industry practitioners um, who, who, who have the experience and the know-how and are trying to build things such as, for example, a common data model um like the w3c work for a common data model for verifiable credentials would be one example uh so so where we see i think fracture is one of the largest challenges particularly for for investors for the for the the marketplace and we as a community should be working to address that fracture while promoting choice of solution and approach and and one of the ways you do that is by working with um industry standards that are global um and and are, and are built by industry expert practitioners. I'd love to give you a sneak peek into my keynote for this year's uh, European Identity Conference. Um, I will be, um, as the president of the Digital ID and Authentication Council of Canada, I will be discuss discussing the, some of the main work that we do, which is the Pan-Canadian Trust Framework, a technology agnostic framework of rules and tools so that different uh, solutions can exist in one ecosystem um, with a baseline of requirements providing uh, people and clients with choice about how they which systems they'd like to use um, we've done some year-over-year -year research um, regarding digital identity and so we see where perspectives have changed and where they've stayed the same um, with regard to personal data sharing um, convenience versus security usability versus security um, what are what are people really demanding um, when it comes to digital identity and how, in fact, COVID um, and the different realities of living in COVID in a world of social distancing and less travel and working from home, um, which populations have been most affected um, and where are they, from which actors and from which stakeholders are they looking for their solutions to come from um, and who are they trusting, uh, you know, for, for management and um, access to personal data. So it's great demographic research that intersects um some of the realities around market awareness and understanding around digital identity itself um, and how the COVID-19 pandemic and everything that comes with it um, has intersected um, people's perspectives and their demand. And the, the short story is um, COVID-19 has driven um, more demand for digital identity. And we'll get into some of the details um, and the demographics uh, and around what people are thinking. Mm -hmm.